Ron, great to see you. Thank you for joining us at the studio. Thanks for having me, Chris. So what is the Smarter Learning Group? Who do you work with and what do you do? Yeah, so the Smarter Learning Group is our consulting practice. We started about 11 years ago. We work with foundations, nonprofits, school districts across the country, all trying to expand educational opportunity for low-income kids and families. COVID helped really shine a light on the myriad gaps that exist. I mean, yes, childhood learning, but also there are issues in access to health care, safe employment, child care, and more. How do you help communities think about prioritizing early childhood learning when there's so much else going on? There is a lot going on. Um, I've dedicated my career to educational equity. I've been a teacher. I've worked in the nonprofit field. Um, prior to starting a consulting practice, I um, founded the National Summer Learning Association. So my whole career has been about really expanding opportunities for kids and families who haven't had them. Um, what I have learned over the years is that local communities really have the power and the ideas and the innovation um, that it takes to close opportunity gaps and to really expand learning opportunities for young people. I think what it takes is some kind of organizing framework. We've done a lot of work with the Campaign for a Grade Level Reading over the last 10 years. What we've learned from local communities, if you have a, a milestone that really matters, that's consequential in the lives of young people, you can really rally and mobilize an entire community around a metric um, and around data to improve something like grade level reading proficiency when it tends to be uh, an issue that really can galvanize a lot of public support um, that otherwise might not exist. So give me an example of that. What, how maybe a community, if you can name it, great, but if you can't, just give me the example of how you help them think about, you kind of really navigate through all of those challenges. It, it feels to me as an outsider that it's this combination of navigating a bunch of different challenges and then finding a way to connect the opportunities and the outcomes. But it, give me an example of something that you guys have done. Well, I think the starting point is really critical. Um, so one of the things that we did very early on with the campaign for grade level reading yeah. is say this really is a strategy about disrupting generational poverty, which is a way to bring people together to say, you know, if you really want to disrupt generational poverty, one of the earliest and best measures we have is whether or not kids are reading proficiently by the end of third grade. And what we know is far too many kids are missing that milestone. Far too many kids are not hitting the mark on that. And what we can do, I think, when we agree on a milestone like that as a community, you can bring a lot of partners to the table um, and really say, hey, wait a minute, you know, the birthright promise of this country is the, is the notion that where you started should not determine where you end up. Um, and what we know is for far too many kids and families, without hitting that milestone, they're not going to succeed. And so that, is, that has been a, a formula that has helped mobilize and energize communities to take action. And I don't think anything motivates people to take action more than knowing that when they actually do take action, that that adds up to real progress um, and can make a real difference in the lives of kids and families. And we know that if you want to move something like third grade reading, it makes no sense to start in third grade. You've got to start prenatal all the way to third grade. And so many of our challenges, so many of our problems feel so big and intractable yes. yeah. and so fractious um, that I think sometimes what we need is a, a framework, something we can agree on, a set of data that we can all look at, look at and say, you know, we really have a problem here. We've got to do something. What, who do we need to bring to the table to really make progress to do something about that? So what's your guidance for local officials, maybe it's school boards, but maybe it's mayors or city councils who say to you, I would love to do that, but have you been to one of my school board meetings lately? I can't get parents to agree on anything. What tips do you have, what guide, how do you get them to come together at a time when it feels like getting communities together on even the simplest issues can be challenging? Yeah, I think what we need is common sense consensus. And I think the key to that often is leading by listening, by really hearing what people have to say, understanding what the underlying concerns are. Um, I've yet to meet a parent or a community leader who thinks um, helping kids learn to read is a bad idea. 
Um, so I think things like that, it's hard to get folks to argue with the idea that kids should be engaged in productive, constructive learning activities yes. in every setting or every context, summer, after school learning. Um, these are all things throughout my career that I've really dedicated um, my life to, really. Um, because I've seen not just the power and the impact of those programs and opportunities, but the ability to really galvanize people around things um, that really most folks agree with. I mean, I look for an 80-20 kinds of issues where you get 80% 80, 80 of people agree that this is a good idea, then surely starting with the kids and families that need those opportunities the most makes good sense. Do any of the parents, I don't know if you end up engaging with the parents, do any of the parents talk to you about, um, you know, I was skeptical that I could find something that I agreed with, with this school board, with this city council, um, but this program really helped me understand what the opportunities can be. Do you get any of the feedback from the parents or is that not where your feedback comes from? Do you hear more from the public officials? Well, I, I think talking to parents is absolutely critical and essential. Both parents that are that are struggling um, and that are encountering challenges and barriers, but also the parents who've succeeded, perhaps even succeeded against the odds. I think we need to take the time to understand their journeys, what it took um, for, for them and their kids to succeed. Um, I think that's absolutely critical and important. And one of the major problems sometimes, I think, for, for many public officials and folks who do work like uh, like we do is we get too far away from community um, and, and get too far away from the real needs that, um, that parents and families have and I don't think anything has reinforced that more than the experience we've been through over the last two years with COVID. And what's your outlook? I mean you get to talk with officials all over the country, see programs all over the country. What's your outlook for us? I'm energized and I'm excited um, and I'm hopeful about what, what I see as an opportunity to recover in ways that are a lot better than where we were um, prior to COVID. Um, I, I don't you think- You see that energy. I see that, I see that energy. I mean, it's hard not to feel that when you're with more than 2,000 elected leaders in an event like this. Yeah. Um, and to really start to see the creativity um, and the resources really to back that up. I think we're at an unprecedented opportunity. I know that word is used all the time now, but I, I really don't think that is, um, that's overstating it. I mean, we're, we're in a situation now where, where I don't hear too often from folks that say, oh, we don't have the money to do that anymore. They do, and it's just how the resources get deployed and prioritized, and the communities that have really spent the last 10, 15 years building infrastructure around childcare, around early learning, they're so much better poised to take advantage of this opportunity and to meet the moment than places that have it. Well, it's excellent to hear. Uh, we will take your energy and we will try to help spread it. Ron, thank you for joining us in the studio. Thank you, it's great to be with you.